welcome back to another episode of Philosophy Lockdown. Today, I'm very happy to be joined by my uh, one of a media developer, Reginald Von Tyrell. Would you like to say a quick hello, Reggie? Good in talk, viewers. I am Eldon Tyrell, lead social media developer at Livestream. Okay, Reg, so this media thing. My favorite part about it is that it's completely unproblematic and morally okay. How do developers manage this amazing feat while also continuing to keep media engaging for its users? Well, I agree that Livestream is engaging and has completely transformed the way in which we interact with each other. That does not mean that Livestream is beyond scrutiny. In fact, I believe there are features which are problematic and morally questionable. Polarious. <laughs> Hilarious? Perhaps it is for tech CEOs as they accumulate billions of advertising dollars generated from you spending time on social media. So, what are your favorite ways to hook digital passers by? Hopefully they're not unsuspecting, but companies are looking at ways to capture a larger share of users' attention. For example, Azaraskin, designer of Infinite Scroll, admits that this mechanism gets users to spend more time on an app than is necessary. Basically, Infinite Scroll makes it harder for users' brains to catch up with their impulse to keep scrolling. Wouldn't such a long scroll be unwieldy? Myth busted. <laughs> well, it's not a physical scroll that a scholar or wizard would use. It's a digital scroll that moves as you slide down the screen of your device. It's actually quite clever how it only shows you a screen's worth of information, which deceptively looks tiny compared to the infinity of information that lies beneath. What, what are you doing? I like this. I'm not sure you understand it. I don't think you understand. Six feet. Her bizarre behavior baffles me. However, I'll take this as an opportunity to say a few things about the like feature. Leah Perlman, the co-inventor of Facebook's like button, has gone on the record saying that she had not intended for the like button to be addictive. However, she herself, the co-inventor of the like button, has admitted that she became addicted to the feedback she got from others through the like button. So that's the problem. Just keep Perlman away from the likes. Problem solved. Not exactly. It might be helpful to think about the scenario like this. Suppose a beverage company creates a wildly popular beverage. Unbeknownst to them, the beverage contains a highly addictive ingredient. Let's call it Cravenol. One of the first things we might ask is, is it okay for them to make and sell this beverage? Well, it sounds like a good time to me. What's not to like? 
I think that you're missing the point, but let's move on. Suppose the same company finds out that Cravenol is addictive, but refuses to change the recipe because it might alter the flavor of the beverage. The company decides to continue selling the beverage as it is. Again, we might ask, is it morally okay for them to do that? Easy. It's definitely okay. A new cocktail bar opened just down the street from here, and they know that alcohol is addictive. Especially since I've been going there every day since they opened. Multiple times. In fact, I went there before I came here, just to loosen up for the interview sign. Had a pint of their finest malort. Twice. Well, that explains your outlandish behavior. But I'm sure you already knew that alcohol is addictive before you ever even went to the bar. However, in our thought experiment, the consumers do not know that the beverage is addictive. But let's suppose that the beverage company makes an effort to inform you about the addictive ingredient through their labels and advertisements. Would it be okay for them to continue selling the drink? No way. You ever heard of a little thing called ignorance is bliss? Why would you rob me of bliss? not exactly sure why you're okay with them continuing to sell the beverage when they know it's addictive and do nothing about it, but you're not okay with them continuing to sell the beverage when they know it's addictive and they do something to inform you that it is addictive. However, I'm not that surprised though. Anyway, let's consider a different variation. Suppose the beverage company intentionally uses an addictive ingredient when formulating the beverage. Is that morally wrong? Obviously not. Cravenol will do wonders for their shareholders. How are they supposed to do that without secret addictive ingredients? I don't think we're seeing eye to eye. Oh, I know. What if the company created an app that you could sync with your smart bottle and it would tell you how much time you spend drinking the beverage every day? Then it would be completely fine. Nobody could have a problem with it then, right? Absolutely brilliant. 
There you go, folks. We can solve the problem of this hypothetical addictive beverage with modern technology and some good old-fashioned willpower. Now get off my show, Egghead. I've got a cocktail bar to get to. No, wait. I forgot to ask what's good about social media besides the mindless entertainment it gives us. Well, some folks think that we can use apps like Livestream and Facebook to make ourselves happier. Just like Malort. For example, psychologist Tamara Hicks suggests that users of these sites can do things to make their experience with these types of media more rewarding and positive. You mean like upgrading our headphones and our laptops so that we have maximum audio and visual quality? Not quite. Hicks thinks that users of these sites can feel better about the quality of their social support if you both actively engage with these sites rather than passively consuming information through them and if you perceive your interaction with these sites as positive rather than just a waste of time. Well, what if that's what you like about these sites? Who needs productive uses of time anyway? <laughs> I'm not surprised by this line of questioning at all. Hicks also argues that we should be controlling the information we encounter on these sites by, for example, unsubscribing from or muting annoying or toxic friends on live stream, Facebook, etc. Wait, is this why I have no likes? Well, I think that's enough for today. Thanks to uh, Reginald for... Uh... Well, it's been an interesting experience. Thank you for uh, having I said me. get the f*** out. Yeah.